was a place with all the zip of new Capella. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 4's DLC Nuka World. My name's Camel and this video is going to be a guide in which I will show us both how to acquire the Thirst Zapper, but more importantly also how to acquire the Project Cobalt Schematics, which will enable us to turn our Thirst Zappers into weapons of destruction. Now at the very start of the Nuka World DLC, when you're going through the gauntlet, you will have to pick up the Thirst Zapper. And I'm sure upon doing so and the game doing the whole, yeah, you just got a unique weapon thing, when you shot it you were like, what the hell? hell is this? Seems to be some kind of squirt gun or water gun, which of course you use to defeat your enemy, but after that it's a useless squirt gun. So to make it into something special, we have to pretty much finish the main quests in the DLC. At one of the very last stages of the DLC main quests, we have to reactivate the power at Nuka World, and we have to have done this to get our hands on the Project Cobalt schematics. So provided you have turned the power back on, we need to come to the world of refreshment. Once inside this building, we need to come to this room with this big frosty reactor thing in it. And over on one of the walls will be a locked door. Now this security door can be unlocked with the terminal. So of course, use your elite hacking skills to hack into that baby. Once it is open, run straight through to the back of the room and on the left there will be an elevator. We want to take this elevator down. Not that we get an option in the direction. Once we get to the bottom, head out turn left and straight ahead. Once heading through this first double door, turn to the right and we'll see a door that says test area. Walk through here and over in the right hand corner on a table is the Project Cobalt Schematics. Along with a note explaining that it's basically a weaponized Nuka Cola, but also very importantly we will find a Thirst Zapper. So although three others can be found besides this one, when you come to get these schematics you'll get a guaranteed one here. So of course, pick up the Project Cobalt Schematics. As we can see, Project Cobalt Schematics, you can now build Quantum Grenades and Thirst Zapper modifications. And of course, just to be safe, pick up that extra Thirst Zapper. Now as always, before looking at any of the weapon modification stats, I have reduced all my character's special attribute stats to one. I also have no bubblehead perk or magazine effects applied to my character, and what this means is that we will be seeing the absolute minimum base stats of the weapons. So, we will have three different modifications we can apply to the Thirst Zapper, provided to us of course by the Cobalt Schematics. So first we're going to be covering the Nuka Cola Gun. A splash of refreshment sprays irradiated Nuka Cola. Now the ammunition for this will have to be made at a chemistry station. As we can see we have the option Weaponized Nuka Cola Ammo. To create one it uses 2 Acid, 4 Copper, 3 Crystal, 2 Nuclear Material and 1 Nuka Cola. So of course if you want to use this modification you have to make some of the appropriate ammunition. And just for the record every single type of ammunition you can build for every single type of modification that goes on the Thirst Zapper looks like this. All of the weaponized Nuka Cola variation ammunition looks exactly the same as you can see on screen right now. It has boom scribbled on it in a lead pencil with a little mushroom clown and three X's because it's actually adult porn. Anyway, so once the Nuka Cola gun modification has been applied to the Thirst Zapper, it will have a base ballistic damage of 57. It will now use the weaponized Nuka Cola ammo as ammunition. It will have a fire rate of 1, a range of 83, an accuracy of 76, a weight of 2, and a value of 10. Okay, now the Nuka Cola gun modification for the Thirst Zapper is probably the least good out of the three. When I say probably, I mean it is. But that does not mean it is bad. Although, to be fair, the material cost of making one ammunition is pretty expensive. And again, when compared to the others, not as good, but compared to everything in the game, it's actually not that bad. Something you do have to kind of shift your mind to is that it's not really like, although it looks like a pistol, it's kind of like the cricket gun from Men in Black. It's much more of an artillery weapon than any other type of weapon. It's actually closer to a grenade than any type of gun. Visually, we can see that it shoots a big glob of Nuka Cola, as one would probably have guessed. Upon impact, it has a very small explosion, so it's not really going to affect anything around what you hit, unless they're like kissing your target at the time. And although it doesn't state it, it does actually do some radiation damage when it hits your enemy, although it's very minimal. But that also seeps over into when you're reloading the gun and using the Nuka Cola ammunition, because it actually applies the radiation damage to your character while you're reloading it. That's some seriously 
unfortunately unhealthy Cola. It had a base ballistic damage of 57 and I was able to get its damage up to 143. And again, that's alright, it's kind of a grenade weapon, but the material cost of its ammo is a little bit high. So now let's move on to the cherry gun modification for the Thirst Zapper. Bursting with flavour causes a small explosion, just like biting into a cherry. Bomb. And like the last, at a chemistry station we can create the ammunition required, the weaponized Nuka Cherry ammo. To create it needs 2 acid, 3 crystal, 3 nuclear material, 1 Nuka Cherry, and 4 silver. So create a way to your heart's content. So now with the Cherry Gun modification attached to the Thirst Zapper, it has a base ballistic damage of 172, it uses the weaponized Nuka Cherry ammo as ammunition, it has a fire rate of 1, its range is 119, its accuracy is is 76, its weight is 2 pounds, and its value is 10 caps. Okay, so the Cherry Gun mod. Straight away, I can tell you that the explosion is much more obvious. It also has its own kind of cool, unique animation effect. It's very cherry red, fiery, fireworky even. There seems to be flames, cherry red smoke, and at the core of it, a very crazy laser pink particle explosion. All of these components coming together to create one of the coolest animations I've seen for a weapon in Fallout 4. And along with this cool animation comes a bigger explosion radius, compared to of course the weaponized Nuka Cola variant of the Thirst Zapper. So not only does it deliver about triple the damage of the weaponized Nuka Cola modification for the Thirst Zapper, but it also damages a greater number of enemies provided they are standing close together. Now although there is a hint of flame in the impact animation, enemies that survive a singular hit do not set on fire and do not take flame damage. So that bonus that you probably weren't even thinking about doesn't exist. Now the projectile is now a dark scarlet Nuka Cherry blob of soda flying through the air, but you will notice that it flies a lot faster. Although it's still a projectile that has to travel between the gun and your enemy, with a noticeable fly time, it does travel much quicker than the standard weaponized Nuka Cola variant. So the fast projectile combined with higher damage and a bigger explosion does make the weaponized Nuka Cherry modification much better than the weaponized Nuka Cola modification. And after getting a bunch of perks, I was able to get its damage up to 431. Again, about triple that of the weaponized Nuka Cola gun. Although, is the material cost of the ammunition worth it yet? Maybe. Depends how many materials you have ready to burn. For now, let's move on to the ultimate modification of the Thirst Zapper, the Quantum Gun. Vaporizes Thirst. Yes, if your enemy is thirst, then yes, yes it does. And then, of course, in brackets, it has and body parts, causes a small nuclear explosion. Yes, well, so does bad Indian food. And you get it to create the appropriate ammunition, the weaponized Nuka Cola Quantum Ammo, you have to go to a chemistry station. Now creating one of these will need 2 acid, 3 crystal, 4 gold, 4 nuclear material, and 1 Nuka Cola Quantum. And the Thirst Zapper with the Quantum Gun modification applied to it has a base ballistic damage of 402, it uses the weaponized Nuka Cola Quantum Ammo as ammunition, its fire rate is 1, its range is 119, its accuracy is 76, its weight is 2, and its value is 10. Now straight away the weaponized Nuka Quantum modification for the Thirst Zapper is easily the best out of the three. Its damage is way higher, it's sitting at about 2.5 times the damage of the Cherry modification and almost 8 times higher than that of the Nuka Cola modification, so already it's way better in that regard. Also the materials required to create one of its ammunition, although a little bit more pricey and using some rarer ingredients such as gold, the benefit you're getting from using a car couple of rarer ingredients is definitely worth it. As said, using some gold instead of some silver, and suddenly you have 2.5 times the damage. Well worth it. Now the animation for this is kind of cool. I think a little bit less well done than say some of the others, but it is still pretty damn awesome. It now shoots a glowing glob of quantum cola that flies through the air incredibly quickly and hits your enemy. Although the projectile does have an arc, it is almost impossible to spot it. If you shoot it, it's going to be kind of like the projectile from the alien blaster, where it basically just goes in a straight line forever. Again, the arc is there, but you will never notice it. Now, the impact animation is really cool. There is a huge white and blue energy sphere that dissipates. Then there's huge blue sparking quantum particle effects that come off it as well. And it is also accompanied by a quantum mushroom cloud. It's pretty much the same impact animation we get from the Nuka Nuke modification for the Fat Man. And again, along with the animation of a bigger explosion, it also has a much bigger explosion radius 
of course, are damaging enemies in a much bigger area. So this is awesome for taking out rooms of enemies. And after I say awesome and actually think about it, it's probably the best thing for taking out a room of enemies. Just be sure you're not standing too close to it, or you'll start feeling a little blue. Now after perking this baby up, I got its damage up to 1006 ballistic damage. Pretty good, considering it has a big explosion and damages a lot of enemies at once. And out of the three modifications for the Thirst Zapper, this is definitely the best one. So if you are going to go for any of the three, go for the Quantum mod. So all in all, the Thirst Zapper absolutely stinks at the start of the game. In fact, it's absolutely useless except for that one fight. However, once you get the Project Cobalt schematics, it becomes a weapon to be reckoned with, or not to be reckoned with, whatever the saying is that I'm looking for, to try to sound cool. Now before we get too detailed, the reloading animation for all of the modifications is awesome. Kind of sadly, it can only hold one ammunition at a time, so after each shot you will have to reload it, but the reload animation, again, it's really cool, and looks of course like what you're seeing on screen now. Now very rarely inside of VATS when you use the Thirst Zapper with any one of its modifications, from Project Cobalt of course, let's say for example you select the enemy's head and shoot, and as you're firing the enemy runs away, well the projectile will actually track them, it'll follow them and make sure that it hits them. This can sometimes look strange inside of VATS, as the projectile suddenly starts curving around corners to hit your enemy in the head. Now because the Quantum mod is the best one, let's talk about that and how it's actually pretty good. Although the material cost of making the ammunition isn't the greatest thing ever, it's not that bad. And considering what you get out of it, it's pretty good. Although you may be able to find weapons or grenades that do greater explosion damage, what you have to think about is the weight. The ammunition weighs almost nothing, and the weapon itself only weighs two pounds. So for a serious survival build, this is an excellent substitute for heavy artillery weapons such as a rocket launcher, as you're getting that huge explosive damage and explosion effect, but at the same time having to sacrifice almost no carry capacity. So the weapon weight, weapon damage, and ammunition weight all together gives the quantum modification an absolutely superior weight to damage output compared to just about any other weapon in Fallout 4, turning it from a pretty goofy looking jokey weapon into something that you should actually seriously consider using. And of course you could apply this seriousness to the other two modifications, the Nuka Cola one and the Cherry Cola one, but again the Quantum mod is the best one so we might as well go with that eh? And if you really want you can acquire four Thirst Zappers, one at the start in the Gauntlet, one next to the Project Cobalt schematics and two can be found in the Nuka Cade. So you could carry three with you and have one modification on each, and then be able to use all three different types of ammunition for their various uses. Although they're pretty much the same, just doing different levels of damage. But all in all, what an excellent end of DLC reward. For so long we've seen Nuka Girl in her spacesuit with her incredibly iconic Nuka pistol, which turns out to be the Thirst Zapper. And after years of fapping, I mean wishing, we've finally gotten it. I had my hopes up when I saw the Thirst Zapper in the Fallout 4 concept art, and thank the heavens they actually put it into the DLC. There was no better time to do so. And again, what an excellent reward for finishing the Nuka World DLC, as not only is it iconic, but it's actually incredibly viable for use in game, even on survival mode with that insane weapon and ammunition weight to damage ratio. After such a long wait, as soon as you pick this weapon up, you'll feel all bubbly inside. You'll also feel incredibly blonde. You'll feel so dar. The first zapper has a lisp, and it also got gold medal. It came thirst. And it sounds just like when you pet a cat named Zap. You'll hear Zap purr. And along with my comedic downfall, here it is, the Thirst Zapper in action.
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I have been Camel, and this has been my guide for the Thirst Zapper and its Project Cobalt schematic modifications. I do hope this video helped you out in some way, and also in helping you understand how it can actually be used quite viably in game. If it did help you out, and you would like to see videos similar to this one, I think you will be very interested in clicking on the playlist button on screen. This, of course, will take you directly to my Full Art Full Guides playlist, where you can select the videos you wish to watch freely, or you can check in the description where it will be frequently updated with links to new Full Art Full Guides that I upload. If your thirst for awful puns has been zapped, please feel free to follow me on Twitter. The link can also be found in the description, or you can search Camelworks on Twitter. And with all that said, I would like to thank you very much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here with me, zapping that thirst away together. And I will see you very shortly through your bedroom window. I mean, in the next video. I'll see you there in a second.